Today marks a special day in Japan on January 31st of 2023. Apparently Square Enix has officially announced that apparently Final Fantasy VII Day is going to be a national day in Japan. Apparently the game is now 26 years old, so um... Damn, it's really been that long, has it? <laughs> you guys back then, I don't know if any old viewers of mine have like really, you know, watched my videos back then in like 2019. But Final Fantasy VII Remake was coming out at the time when E3 2019 was around the corner. And it was probably one of the biggest days for E3 fans and for Square Enix fans. Everybody was excited. But I'm not going to reminisce about FF7 Remake mainly. I'm going to reminisce about how I got into Final Fantasy VII. Now it all started like maybe way back in like 2019, I would say. I didn't become an official fan of the series until like late 2019, which is apparently the day I made content for the game, mainly for the original and for the remake. And uh, apparently a lot of people kept asking me, why don't you talk about Final Fantasy more? Or Final Fantasy VII more often? Well, now you got it. The day that I played, uh, the day that the remake got announced, I decided to purchase FF7 on the Nintendo Switch. I got to play through the rest of it, and my god, it was probably one of the coolest RPGs I've ever played in the entirety of my life. Don't blame me. I was a fucking kid. I was drawing, like, shit like this in my high school notebooks at the time. It took, like, a very certain specific thing to target me, apparently, with video games, and... Normally fighting games, JRPGs, and whatever platformer game or whichever game that I'm into apparently I will eventually play on the channel or maybe even make a video about it in the first place. And Final Fantasy VII Remake were one of the few other uh, games that I focused on the channel mainly because there was a bunch of stuff coming out for it at the time. And then while I was doing that I was playing through the original game as well. And it was really fun. I had an, a lot of enjoyment out of the Midgar section, which was like five hours long, I'm assuming. And then you get to go explore the places and recruit new party members and take down Sephiroth. And it's just mm, it's chef's kiss. It's the most coolest thing I've ever seen. Normally, though, after I finished it, I was more anticipated for the remake now. Now, the remake, I was expecting to maybe be a little iffy at times. Like, it, ta it has taken me maybe approximately two and a half years to process the game's ending, mainly. Now, while the FF7 remake doesn't really share the full story of the original game, it might as well share some the first half of the game, mainly. So mainly, what I remember from my videos that I made a few months back, Final Fantasy VII Rebirth got announced, and it apparently is going to be focusing on an unknown narrative after the ending of FF7 Remake. And apparently, we still don't know what's going to be happening, though. Like, maybe some new char some characters could end up dying, possibly in a fake-out death or a real death, though, but you never know. Zap could be still alive. Uh, Sephiroth's endgame plan is coming into fruition now that he has destroyed the ghosts that were supposed to be, you know, keeping the timeline, like, say like originally kept in together for the FF7 game. But with the remake, I'm expecting, I was expecting it to pretty much not be a sequel, but it feels like it technically. But you get the idea. And I will admit, the remake is really fun, and the original game is really fun. And it really holds a special place in everybody's hearts, including myself. The story is great, the characters are awesome, the gameplay is timeless, and the graphics for the cutscenes mainly in the PS1 were pretty much, uh... Let's just say that it was revolutionary for its time, because it's not really... It's like, nowadays, technology can be used in many different ways, but back then, Square Enix was limited with what they had at the time. And plus, this was like the first ever Final Fantasy game that was made in 3D and then now put on different hardware from a different company, which was Sony and PlayStation instead of Nintendo. But man... How much different would Final Fantasy VII be if it was mainly on Super Nintendo or N64? It'd be, be a weird year. <laughs> yeah, I, I just wanted to make a really quick video about this, though. I just was just rambling about how much I, you know, like the 26th anniversary for this game and just for the series alone. 
it's insane. Like, that it's been around this long, and genuinely, I don't really think Tetsuya Nomura should really... Well, he's doing a somewhat decent job with the story, but I hope to, to a certain degree that FF7 Rebirth is really good, and then Beyondward, I really hope, uh, the third game will be really good. So, Square Enix, and all the other people out there who have made Final Fantasy VII content and, like, branded off of it mainly, thank you guys. You are the best. So, uh, yeah. I guess that's about it for this video, so, um, anyway, that's about it. See ya.